Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week we're talking about Season 5, Episode 16, titled Victims of Circumstance. It originally premiered on May 5th, 1989. Both the name, timing of this episode, and everything involved with it has a really interesting connection with modern news that's happening right as we speak. Yeah, and, it, it's a little eerie, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the writer is Richard Lorre, and this is the only episode he ever wrote, but the director is Colin Buxy. Now, Colin Buxy, you might recognize that name. He directed Rock in a Hard Place. Like a Hurricane, and Death and the Lady. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John. Up to now, we've had some pretty lackluster music selection in the episodes. But this episode feels different somehow. What do you got for us this week? I've got some new stuff for you. It's not particularly interesting, but it's new. <laughs> <laughs> So let's start with the first band. We have Misguided Angel by Cowboy Junkies. Cowboy Junkies is kind of a a eclectic, like, they're they're kind of music for music snobs, I kind of think is the best way to put it. So it's weird. They're an alternative country and folk band from Toronto, Canada. They formed in 1985. None of this this beginning stuff is going to make you think considered one of the most influential artists but just follow with me. A country folk <laughs> band from Canada in 1985 <laughs> formed by bassist Alan Anton, Michael Timmons on guitar, Peter Timmons on drums, Margo Timmons on vocals. By the way, guys, all of the Timmons, they're related. <laughs> I'm so used to that being like, everyone has to see my last name. No relation. Actually, even their brother John was in the band, but he left before they released their first album. Shout out to unofficial member Jeff Bird, who literally recorded on every album but the first album, but is it listed as as a band member? Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> Alan Anton, Michael Timmons, they formed their first band in high school called Hunger Project. Hunger Project, and actually you, you may or may not have heard of them. Um, Because they actually did have a fame about them. And they would move to New York. They would play the club circuit. And in 1981, they got their first multi-city tour. So after that tour, Hunger Project moved to the UK. They toured there for three months, released a single. And then the band kind of fell apart and they disbanded. But Anton and Timmons stayed friends. And this becomes a theme with them. Like, they took a year off and just hung out in Germany. They started a duo improv band called Germinal. And, like, one of them worked at a record store for a year. They basically just effed off in London and learned about music. And finally, Germinal broke up in 84. And they returned to Toronto in 85 and formed Cowboy Junkies with Vince's siblings. So Germinal would break up. Is break up, even though it was just Alan and Mike. Alan and Mike would move back to Toronto in 85 and they'd form Cowboy Junkies with the rest of Michael's family, apparently. This guy who really wanted to be a music producer in Canada heard their sound and helped them record their first album in 1986, which they recorded in the family garage, made a makeshift booth in their kitchen, and they recorded with a single ambisonic microphone the album being titled white off earth now that's an interesting that album, title <laughs> like what the heck does that mean <laughs> yeah yeah so in that first album would sell thousand copies which isn't much but it's enough to get you a little bit of a tour going and would get them enough to get full album made their next album would would actually go double platinum in canada single platinum in the u.s and then their four following albums would go platinum gold 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 all in canada they went from selling three thousand copies of some off-brand album that they made in their garage very next album going platinum in u.s in the u.s and canada Damn. So to add some perspective, so that first album, going through the history of this, them as a band, it's constantly like we were trying to find the sound of Middle Eastern combined with blues, combined with it's this really artsy, always trying all these different experimental. They were uh, alternative folk band, whatever the heck that means, you know. <laughs> they were very critically acclaimed because of their 
the different styles of music that they played and everything. And they were totally that band that would be like, they literally drop uh, everything and would move to China for three months and record an album inspired by their living in China in a small village in China. Like they're that musician. They are actually hugely influential as far as like deep cut music nerds, music snobs, as far as the, the, the kind of stuff they did, they dropped like 12 albums. In fact, they're still dropping albums. They dropped an album called All That Reckoning in 2018. Outside of all that, not a whole lot of interesting stuff. No, <laughs> no therapy pillow fights. No, uh, stealing <laughs> David Bowie's guitars. <laughs> um, no one's going to rehab. Like they have a pretty awesome life. You know, they've, they've traveled the world and they've made great music and they're very accomplished and they're from Canada. So I assume that they're very nice and polite people. <laughs> Good for cowboy junkies. Our next song is Severance by Dead Can Dance. Dead Can Dance. There's got to be someone Australian on the Vice crew. Because Dead Can Dance is an Australian music project formed in 1981 in Melbourne, Australia. Now, guys, we've had a lot of Australian bands, a lot of bands very popular in Australia. I don't know why that is. Dead Can Dance, they were formed in Australia. They relocated to London in 82. That was a mistake, re relocating to London. They should have stayed in Australia, don't you know? Uh -huh. If you're Australian native, you can be huge. They'll just buy your stuff, no matter what it sounds oh, yeah. like. They're missing out on all that Australian money. All those didgeridoos. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am 75% sure that their currency is called a didgeridoo, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Ted Kid Dance was formed by Lisa Gerard and Brendan Perry. They were a couple at the time. And it also featured Erickson on bass, at least originally. Their music described as African polyrhythms mixed with Gaelic folk mixed with art rock and about eight other things that don't make any sense. No, pick a genre and stick to it, damn it. Yeah. So another description, early, early work, was described as goth as it gets. Drum-driven ambient guitar uh, and chanting and howling. So it's chanting and howling and all different kinds of crap. <laughs> but for whatever reason, it was super popular, particularly in Australia. They made a ton of didgeridoos. They made so many didgeridoos <laughs> that they followed it up with a four-track album called Garden of the Arcane Delights. And they were just, things were still rolling. Their second album, Spleen and Ideal, they added session musicians on cello, trombone, timpani of all the <laughs> instruments. Cello, trombone, and timpani, which I, apparently they were trying to go for a medieval Europe, Euro sound. Well, it, it kind of worked. In, it, they released it in 85. It hit number two on indie charts. It got them serious cult following in Europe. Dead Can Dance at this point in the, in the mid-80s, they did not have any distribution in the U.S., so they were relatively unknown. They started to get that cult following by the 90s, actually gotten distribution through Warner Brothers. Their Into the Labyrinth uh, album sold half a million and helped build them a solid following here in the U.S. 89, Gerard and Perry had broken up, even though they were still working and writing together and recording together. That wasn't going to last forever. And by 98, they officially broke up, broke up, as in stopped making music together. They would stay broken up until 2005. They would do a reunion tour. They would do the whole box albums and box, you know, the box sets and Greatest Hits albums uh, eventually would spark another tour, which would lead to another reunion tour, which as recent as 2018, they announced that they are about to release a new album. This one will be recorded at the famous Abbey Road Studios. Mm. And they are currently finishing up a tour. So yeah. Dead Can Dance, still touring Australia and most of New Zealand. <laughs> I, I shouldn't take shots at them. They sold half a million records in the United States. That's pretty damn impressive. Yeah, it's true. Even if it was 1992. <laughs> I'm assuming they're still probably big, big in Australia and some parts in New Zealand. <laughs> um, not so much in London anymore. And that leads us to our last song, Miami Beach Roomba by the Cle Klezmer Conservatory Band. And guys, this one's getting quick. The Klezmer Conservatory Band was a Boston-based group which performed traditional Klezmer music. You know, Klezmer uh. music. 
<laughs> so I looked it up. Um, the long and short is Yiddish. They performed Yiddish music. Mm, okay. Formed by Hankus Netsky. He was of the New England Conservatory of Music in 1980. They actually were originally formed for one single concert, but stayed and staying together and have gone on to release 11 albums. They were even the featured band in 1988 documentary on klezmer called a jumping night in the garden of eden good for like a, a put together band like string orchestra type deal <laughs> they were only supposed to play one show they ended up playing 11 albums in 20 plus years music <laughs> music well i can't wait to get to our final thoughts but those two bands that were in this that i had no idea existed and of course one of them was going to be huge in Australia. Of course. I mean, there was no way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you see a band them. you don't recognize. They're huge in Australia. Huge in Australia. Huge. <laughs> all kinds. Make it all kinds of didgeridoos. <laughs> Let's go give our final thoughts on this episode. And that's going to do it for us this week on Go With The Heat. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We would love to hear from you. Email us. Go with the heat at gmail.com. Let us know what you think about this episode. You can also find us on Facebook at Go With The Heat, Twitter at Go With The Heat, Instagram at Go With The Heat. You know how to get a hold of us. You can find us at Go With The Heat pretty much anywhere and everywhere. Be sure to check out that website, GoWithTheHeat.com. And you can find all those ways to contact us, all the ways to subscribe, all the ways to support the show. Support step number one, contact us. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. Support step number two, check out that Patreon. You want to get those stickers? You got to get them in soon because if you're a patron in the month of January and your payment goes through on February 1st, I'm going to get that list together and I'm going to send out stickers to everyone. You got to make sure that you are on that list because this will be the only time we are going to have merch for this show. We only have five episodes to go. This is your one shot to get in on a merch for this show. Support step number three. Go to your podcast, your platform of choice and leave us a review at this stage. We would love more people to be able to find the show and be able to find it after we're done. But also, this is a great opportunity to go in there and, you know, a swan song. Tell us how much you love us. <laughs> go in there and leave a review inside of your podcatcher platform. A choice. Uh, we, we would love to see that now that we only have five episodes to go. We've made 100. This is our 127th episode. So we'd love to see those things. We'd love to see what you think about the show. That's and if great. you don't want to tell us how much how great you think we are then tell us do you think angelo knows where tubbs jr is <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna do it for us this week we hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see y'all next time bye pals